Today is the fifth episode of the 1859 Indian Head Penny with interesting facts, myths about the 1850 uh, Indian Head Pennies in general. So that's what this series has primarily been about. Today is the so the series goes by the pennies in the Penny album, and this is the fifth penny of the Penny album, hence the fifth episode. I was thinking that there's a good chance I'm going to run out of interesting facts way before this uh, Penny collection is over because, I don't know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, pages, well not a lot, there's one, two, three, three pages plus three more pennies, so that's 12 times three is 36, 36 plus three, so there's 39 pennies if I don't add any uh, before the uh, we get to the last penny, so that's a, that's a lot of episodes. And I don't know if there's that many interesting facts about the Indian head scent, unless I broaden uh, the uh, what, what we're gonna uh, look at and talk about uh, maybe a little bit beyond um, the specific facts to the Indian head penny. So this is the this is the fifth, right? Because we've done four. So this is the fifth penny in the fifth episode. And you can see this 1859 Indian head scent is in, mm, I'm gonna put it in as, it's better than poor. It's not very good. So it's probably, I would say this is a good condition Indian head penny. It has some either environmental damage because remember the penny, 1859 cents as of 2024 are 165 years old. So they're in, <clears throat> I would consider this a, you know, pretty old coins. And they've had a lot of opportunities to get damaged and then worn over the damage. So if there is a die chip or um, a mint error, some of them might not be as easy to determine versus pre, uh, excuse me, post mint damage, in my opinion. Now, this penny has, you can see it has a, a bunch of um, chips in, in the coin. <clears throat> the front has, even the front has some, and the edge, of course, you can see has quite a, quite a bit of them. And it's really hard to tell, in uh, from from my from my view, whether this is uh, post mint damage or pre mint damage. I have a bunch of, as you can see in the collection, we got 39, 1859 cents, and we're gonna and some of them do look like they're uh, mint damage, you know. So we will we will we will look at them. This one does not look like mint damage. So today, in today's episode, I would like to talk a little bit about a person named James Barton Long Gars. James Barton Long Gars. James Barton Long Gars was born August 11, 1794. And he died January 1st, 1869, or exactly 10 years after the first 1859 penny was produced in January 1st of 1859. <clears throat> so he was, he, was an, he was an artist who did portraits, who was then given a job by the United States government and he was 
the chief engraver from 1844 until his death in 1869. So that's pretty remarkable. And there's a picture of him. And let me tell you, that's going to be one of the most eerie pictures. I mean, this is... It's a great picture, and it's, I mean, he's a, he did portraits, so you would hope they had an archive, a good picture of him, and let me tell you, they sure do. Maybe I'll use that as the, uh, the thumb, the thumbnail. Okay. He was born... In Pennsylvania, interestingly enough, and he ran away. I guess he must have had a rough childhood. He ran away to Philadelphia at the age of 12 and became an apprentice in a bookstore. So, and he became a he became an artist at a very young age, which was very typical for that. Back then, you had to have a, uh, a skill. I mean, people were working and having children and families at a very, very young age, and that makes sense. Um, born on a farm. Became the apprentice in the bookstore. Okay. So, and then he was, I guess he had a family, and he had a, obviously had a daughter, because the daughter is... This is a um, picture of his daughter wearing a Native American, uh, wearing a Native American headdress. And many of the articles online talk about why, about the Native American in United States history of the 19th century, or also known as the 1800s. And it, from what I've read, there seems to be two prevalent thoughts. And honestly, from what I from my point of view, neither one is really positive. One was the Native American as a savage who um, did savage deeds, kidnapping women and, and things of that nature and running around with uh, with uh, Stone Age weapons. The other one is of a Native American princess of of beauty, but largely depicted as a. Um, in my again, this is all my opinion from what I've briefly read. I'm not gonna. It would take me probably months and years to become a, an expert in the area. But very from from a curse, cursory. Um, overview, the other camp was of the, the Native American princess and um, that she's beautiful and, and, and very uh, Western kind of appearance. Western, um, what's the word I'm thinking about? Uh, European is the word I was looking for. A very European uh, personification of of the Native American as as a basically as a female, right? And one of the ways that's done is through art, um, newspapers. So these so the artists really had a very strong um, had a very strong place in the political realm 
of capturing images for the politicians and, you know, basically putting out uh, the ideas that they wanted to affect, I guess, voting and everything of that nature. And there were those two ways of looking at the Native American, generally speaking, from what I've seen. Which, in my opinion, of course, they are both negative. I don't know which one. I, to me, I actually think the second one is worse to, to you know, uh, basically uh, emasculate a whole um, race, a whole population, a whole identity um, into a, uh, a European um, lady, which, you know, none of them were remotely close to that because they you know, lived in, in nature and um, for the most part, as I, as I understand it. So, this person, this artist, James Longars, was the, was the person who came up with this image, and this is his daughter's image. And he basically used the European female princess as the image that would be on the Indian head scent from 1859 until 1909. 50 years. Exactly. Isn't that something? Half of a century, a female... image was used to depict and I'll be honest with you I didn't know this was a female until I started doing this series <clears throat> I keep a I keep another better condition Indian head sent to do uh, references while making the videos so that I can show it <clears throat> when we have a uh, scent that's in poor condition just to give an illustration and this is James Longars's daughter. Maybe one day I'll do a. Uh, um, I'll, I'll do a little deep dive into who she is, and um, her life. But right now we're talking about her father, her father, the person who did the engraving and the portrait, and uh, the, and it's his family member forever. Um, captured her image forever captured in the Indian head set sent. So I guess all of this was totally normal and um, if very few things last for 50 years and I think uh, that's a pretty remarkable length of time for for an image that's really not even of a Native American. And of course, uh, there was something that I read that said that um, Indian Head was, that the actual name Indian Head comes from um, a reservation called Indian Head. Um, I, I'm not sure what state it's in. It could, be, it could actually be Pennsylvania, which is interesting that he's from Pennsylvania, which I also did not know. And that it doesn't really refer to an Indian's uh, portrait, a Native American's portrait, and that it really refers to a place, and that this really is not, quote unquote, air quotes, an Indian head, but it's really <laughs> the Indian princess who we spoke about during this video, the European image of a female with. A Native American with Native of American attire, and this has and this penny really has nothing to do with Native American whatsoever. Not in the name, not in the portrait, not in depicting uh, them as a people whatsoever. And James Longars was the um, was the artist who. I guess was in charge of uh, the, uh, you know, depicting political 
themes and putting them into into coins. Uh, if I saw it correctly here, it talks about. I mean, he was doing. He, he's done several coins. He did the uh, his best known for designing the Indian Hescent, which was commerce and uh, which entered into commerce in 1859. And he was also the designer for the shield nickel, the flying eagle scent, and other coins of the mid 19th century. So this he was a you know a very um, popular person and and an important person and that and by the way that picture this picture and we'll end on this this picture I swear I thought this then this is how talented people were I really thought and it's funny because it's in they have it in the circle like a frame but according to this it's a this is a painting which I don't it says portrait by in 1855 uh, Isaac Wren and I'll be honest with you I, if that's a painting that's incredible it, it looks I think that's too detailed to be a painting personally but that's what it says portrait I think that's a that's a picture a photograph personally but I don't know you could do uh, some research and you can let me know in the, the comments if you like so this that will end our fifth episode of on the uh, Indian Head Scent and the 1859 Indian Head Penny from the collection and we will move the flag over to the completed section and we will put the scent back in its proper place that's one thing I have to say about these books they are really nifty and handy but as far as the uh, it's not the easiest thing to get to get coins in and out of because they're pretty pretty close fits so there goes the the flag and um, this Indian hen scent will be the next one we review in episode six okay so thank you for being here and i will see you on the next one